attacking them through the idea that if it's greater than or equal to 2,000, do something else, it must be here. Right? Now I'm saying if it is greater than 1,000, it means it's in that interval only, else it must be here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. that, that concept that I'm trying to get across here as well is this whole idea of intervals and how you can be quite logical and how you do it. All right, so um, I've taken them through that. So this is a selection statement for those who haven't done it before. You are selecting particular coding depending on conditions. Okay? Selection statement for branching. Yes, this Oh, just, why are we using Notepad? What's the advantage? Notepad is just easier word processing. Much easier word processing. Your word processing in the art environment, it, it actually comes back to just personal choice. I prefer to type a Notepad because I just find I can get better word processing features. Where if you're working in Python, it's like, no problem with it. Okay. There's one way or the other. Plus, I can make it bigger in Notepad um, on this screen, which I can't do in Python. I think that's probably why I did it. Yeah. So I can make it bigger here for me to see as opposed to the other one. Yes. There's an old chat here. It's on the back. I don't get the same result because it's not showing up that same to the salary of the same. It's not showing you this bit here. No, the top line. That one. So you've got your salary equals quote. Bracket, a bracket, and you've got two brackets here. Yeah. yeah. And you've got your quotes around these, yeah. double quotes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll come and have a picture of that. I've got a box. No, okay, hang on. Let's just go through the process. So we've done it in notepad. Okay. I've opened it up in um, Python, which is this one here. In this environment, make sure you've clicked on that. Get yeah. file to run it. Okay. This one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if that doesn't work, 
what you need to do then is to go under Parkin and you will go to the health function. So under Parkin shelf here, we go health. Um, go to Parkin Docs F1 and yeah, you should be able to do that. Parkin Docs is your health. Uh, okay. So we have to go to
this is the string you put in front of whatever is inside this variable. So in other words, what he's saying is, if I come back to the bit down here, I'll just bring that down. It's again telling the kids about syntax is important, and it's just for the compiler, and it's just what it does, and it says, this is my string, but because there is this inside the string, they sits a little flag to say, hang on, I've got to put a number in here because it's percentage D. We I find the number, I find the number in that variable. But you can get them to teach and or practice and say, well, leave that out, what do you get? And if you leave that out, you get an error message. Okay, so if you know the wife is there, we'll take it out and see what it does. It doesn't work because it wants to have that proper syntax that's coming back to something. Okay, so we look sequence, we look selection, we look selection, and we move this one of the loops. Okay, right, now we're going to really jump ahead. And what we're going to jump ahead is to look at some strings. So strings is in that three P P bit. <coughs> and if you want to know where I say strings, strings page 101. and you can access the characters one at a time with the pressure of the laser. Now this is coming into this idea of event data and again you can bring in a bit of data representation saying that actually when this is stored, every letter is an SD character. So how does it know which one to look for? And you can say why it's actually in a list in the counter and the list is also coupled which is another one again. Um, but above one letter is fruit square bracket one. Square bracket is important. The second statement selects a character number one from fruit and assigns it to the letter. This is your index, right? Which one do you want? And you print. So when it prints it out, it actually comes up with A. Not the first one. What is the first one? Right, so this is what they're going to realize. It starts at zero. And the first one is index zero, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay? <coughs> Those are the indexes. Your default is zero all the time. So it's really important to get that in the printing. Okay? For most people, da 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 da, you've got the whole there. So these are the zero letter and you've got that. The next important string function is the length. How many things are there in that list? Okay, and the length of it is what is it? That's your fruit. What's the length of fruit? And six. So the length of a string is important because that will also tell you if you're doing a loop, how many times you've got to go through your loop. Okay? Because your loop will count from one to ten. Alright? But your index goes from zero, one to three to nine. You make it's the you gotta get to get it on there. So what we've got here is length of length, um, curved bracket, parenthesis, and last is fruit, square bracket. Now it's really important to have the difference. This one is actually a function. I'm saying do this process on this um, input, okay? Whereas this represents a number which is an index. And that's how you are Tyler knows the difference. Am I doing a function or am I looking for an index? So the index is square brackets, the curve bracket is the function. Okay? The reason is that there is no letter in the line over six, remember? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. To five. So these little things that you've got to look at as well. Traversal with the for loop. <coughs> okay, I want you to type this in. Type that in and you can just go straight into your Python. You don't have to um, go to Notepad. So if we go to test one, we just go to the new one, new window, new window here, and then just type in that bit there. Index is zero. But you actually have a bit in front of that. You've got to have fruit as a sign banana. Okay, so let me help you here. So you're going to have fruit as a sign banana. And by the way, Python doesn't matter whether you use single quotes or double quotes, it doesn't matter. So we'll take both. And now we're going to have index zero and carry on from there. <coughs> 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 
And that's what you do a lot of in, in handling. You only want bits. You want to find a word. The computer doesn't know what a word is, but it does know what a blank is. It knows what a blank is, and you want to have a bit between the two blanks. It's a word, isn't it? For us. So you want to slice that out there. So um, it's a case of which you could work through this here. He's got all of this there. So fruit, square bracket, colon three, is from the beginning up to three. If we go three colon, it's from three to the end. Okay? So you've got that concept here as well. <coughs> now this is a, a phrase that you need to know, and it's another long word. Some Bell says big words and simple concepts. Um, yes, this is a big word, and the simple concept is that you can't change it. Immutable is you can't change it. If you're saying that your string is banana, it's saying banana. You can't change it. Only if it's in another concept, which is like tuple, then you can change it. So that immutable seeds you can't change. If my greeting is this, and I want to put, instead of in the first place, I want the letter J, and I try and say, I want you to put in the first place J, it won't do that. Okay? But I can assign my first letter to another variable, but I can't change this variable. Does that make sense to the immutable means you cannot change the value of your variable here. You can manipulate it, but put it in another variable. Okay? And I'm using this word variable, so for those who haven't done programming, I'm sorry, it's a holding place with the line. On the left is a location, and on the right is content. You take what's in that place, do something to it, and put it in this place here. Yeah. Okay? So that's what you've got there. Then you've got find functions, and we're talking about functions here a bit. One function, um, a function is just a block of code to do something very specific. That's what it really is. So you can then go through the list of functions beforehand. So essentially, it's a case of working through all of that. All right. So what I wanted to do now is to show you this bit here. Mm. So I'm just going to read it out. I would have done some practices in the first hand, but I'm just showing you about some questions. That's really what you want. 
And this one is another question as well. But then you come to, um, for example, uh, 2C from page 153. They actually have to leave the plan themselves. They have to start thinking. Now, um, what I've done with my year 11 this year, I think some of you have seen, but I'll just um, show you in my year 11. Okay, this is the one I gave to them as practice, and I would have given them a question, which is more brief if you like, but this is what I expect them to do with that plan and algorithm. They need to tell plan and design solution. <coughs> problem decomposition. So avoid using the word algorithm because it's actually used in the same time, it's doing the same. So I'm trying to get into a problem decomposition. What are you entering into this program? What's your input? What are you expecting to get out of it? Alright? What do you want the computer to tell the user at the end? And they analyze that and they should be telling me what kind of data it is, where they're getting it from. Possibly doesn't make a lot of sense here, but it could have been a mouse click, it could have been a choice, it could have been a file, it could have been touch, whatever, I don't know. But they're getting ideas into data, it's not always just into by the people, they are other ways. Okay? What are you expecting out? And then they come with the first little bit of planning. What is the first thing you want to do? Well, I've got to enter my data. So give me an exact construct, first of all, just how am I going to get in the data? And then from there, I'll get to the next bit and I'll scaffold. So it's this idea of scaffolding, that they will not write a whole plan from line 1 to line 100 straight. It doesn't group that way. You get a small bit working. Then you're going to add on to that. Then you're going to add on to that. And then you're going to add on to that. So that's the kind of scaffolding I was trying to get them to do. So what I will get them to do now is, when they're going to do the input, they're going to have to tell me if it's an array or a list. Okay, so that means if I've got a list, I've got a loop. I must have. If I've got a list, I've got a loop. What am I loop going to do? So we will then build up from here into this planning from the but I'm now going to say loop for array or enter data into array for loop. Okay? What they're going to have to have and get that there. So if I go on to here and I'm going to flick right across to um, see the new section here because I'm only taking second five out of the box. Um, right at the bottom is an example on an array where you sort, but you don't want to have to look at the sort of stuff. But it gives you an idea of how you could get them to just make a visual picture of what the array is going to look like. And I think in the beginning it's important. What's the big name of the array? What's going to be inside that array? What are your subscripts going to be? Your indexes? So they sort of start thinking that way. And then the problem, and all I've done is I've taken the whole problem and decomposed it. So you've got an example of how you might want to take some problem decomposition. Okay? So I've done that from there where it was to get a median. And you'll see that I've got some loops going over there. Then I've got another one which starts on page 190. And three exercise three point one on one, which is some more questions, and we're looking at functions and such like. Now, I haven't got your functions. I'm sorry, we haven't got. We need them too much to do. Um, but for the function, if you look at those swap function numbers there as well. So, in functions, what I've encouraged the students to do, and I think I've put it in here as well, is to, yep. So if you just carry on flicking through until you get to page 214. The bottom it says 214. So this is just, it looks something like this. It's to give you an idea of how they can plan in modular design. In other words, what are the different things I have to do? What are my little modules that I'm going to break my program up into? So this is a possible way of doing that design. So you can read through the question in yourself, and it's going to print, it's going to sort it, it's going to do that, determine the same deviation of print up, so I've got the big picture. When you go into the next page, you're now 
the benefits module again came out. So you've got a further <coughs> breakdown, which is really what we want to do as a plan. And then they can go ahead and actually do the little bit that's got to go in. So this will happen. So I'm going to do this bit. Test it. Is it working? Yes. Right. Let me do this bit. Test it. Is it working? Can you carry on from me? So what I'm trying to give you here is a way you might want to do the planning. Alright? As far as your module is going to go. And I'm just giving you some more questions. Because I know that if you're like me, you never really have enough questions. So I've given you hopefully a whole lot of questions over here. And one of the things that I do explain later on is how does your whole function call work. Now, when you do functions, um, and there was one that we just looked at here, and I know that it's today. Functions was Right, in functions, function calls, when you define a function, hmm, it's got, um, it talks about all the general ones we would use anyway, but if you define a function, and I actually do this one with the kids themselves. The keyword is define, D E F. You give your function a name and start off with empty brackets. Empty brackets mean you're not sending anything to the function. Okay? Empty brackets are saying this is my function name. I'm defining a function and this is what goes into it. Okay. We can call it in the main program. All you're going to do is in the main program, um, in this particular case, you see print, print lyrics. But in a main program, you would just say print lyrics because you just want to call that function. So when you call it in the main program, it goes back to where you've defined it, does all of that, and then comes back to where it's good from. Okay? So if you like, you think of the function as a little deviation you go to. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, or I keep doing the same sort of things, I write shh. Do it, carry on with the main thing. Okay? Um, then, when you actually put stuff inside those brackets, you can actually have a function called a function. But if you put stuff inside here, that's when you come to this idea of parameters and arguments. If you put stuff inside here, you are saying, I need something to do on. Alright? And that's a parameter. <coughs> we do that a lot. When we did the length function, do you remember we did this bit here? And I said that's a function, length fruit. Do you remember me telling you about that? <coughs> I didn't say to them. I wanted the length of something. I had to give it something to work on because it's been defined as the a parameter. And when I call it, I give it a value and then call an argument. So, another lot of long words to learn. But um, he goes on further and down, I think it's about page 77, and he talks about fruitful functions when you put stuff in and you get stuff back. So, all I can say to you is you'll need to read through these notes. But hopefully, you've got some idea of where you're going. And I think I've given you quite a lot of questions. Now, the other lot of notes I've got here came from an earlier book, and it's just got some more questions on the rail. It's an alternative way that you might want to do with planning. It's a Nazi Schneider and diagram that you don't have to know if it's a Nazi Schneider and diagram. Oh, I know some Nazi ones will tell you. The other thing that I do when I do functions, particularly when they come with this, I the kids to give me a black box. And I say to them, right, what do you want to see to the function? That comes here. What do you want from the function? That comes here. And once they've analyzed that, this is the parameter, this is what's returned. Okay? And what happens this side is it down the black box. And it's all that the is trying to do to realize your function has to be a single moment. And then you come to this next concept of local and global variables. But I won't go ahead because I think we've heard enough today. Okay, right, it's up to you. It's just about lunchtime. And those who need the program, I have a quick look at the announcement. Thank you very much.